we're asked to consider the function f of x and let big F of x be the antiderivative of f of x with big F of one equal to zero, determine big F of x. So we'll first determine the indefinite integral of f of x, which will give us the antiderivative in the form of big F of x plus c. Then we'll determine the specific antiderivative by determining the value of c, since we know big F of one is equal to zero. So we begin by determining the indefinite integral of five divided by x cubed minus two divided by x to the sixth, where the variable of integration is x indicated by differential x. However, before we can integrate, we need to apply the negative exponent property shown above in order to apply the power rule of integration shown here below. Since one divided by x to the power of n is equal to x to the power of negative n, we can rewrite five divided by x to the third as five x to the power of negative three. Then we have minus two divided by x to the sixth is equivalent to two x to the power of negative six. And now we can apply the power rule of integration to find the general antiderivative. The integral of five x to the power of negative three is equal to five times the integral of x to the power of negative three, which is x to the power of negative three plus one, divided by the quantity negative three plus one, and then minus the integral of two x to the power of negative six which is equal to two times the integral of x to the power of negative six, which is x to the power of negative six plus one, divided by the quantity negative six plus one, and then we have plus c, any constant. Let's go ahead and simplify. We have five times x to the power of negative two, divided by negative two, minus two times x to the power of negative five, divided by negative five, plus c. Let's continue simplifying. The first term is negative five halves, x to the power of negative two. Next we have minus two, and then we have a negative five in the denominator, which simplifies to plus two fifths, x to the power of negative five, plus c. And then finally, let's rewrite this using positive exponents. So we have the general antiderivative, big F of x, is equal to negative five, divided by the product of two and x squared, plus two divided by the product of five and x to the fifth plus c. So this is the first step in the process. We now have the general antiderivative, but now since we know big F of one is equal to zero, we can determine the value of c to determine the specific antiderivative. And let's do this on the next slide. Since we know big F of one is equal to zero, when we substitute one for x, the function value must equal zero, which gives us the equation zero equals negative five divided by the product of two and one squared plus two divided by the product of five and one to the fifth. And then we have plus c. And now we solve the equation for c. We have zero equals negative five halves plus two fifths plus c. Let's add these two fractions by obtaining a common denominator which would be 10. We have zero equals negative 25 tenths plus four tenths, which is negative 21 tenths plus C. And now to solve for C, we add 21 tenths to both sides, which gives us 21 tenths equals C. And therefore the specific antiderivative we are looking for is big F of X is equal to negative five divided by two X squared plus two divided by five X to the fifth and then since c is 21 tenths, we have plus 21 tenths. I hope you found this helpful.